Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Today, we are going to be talking about Prince. Hi, you're with the lads. I'm Pat. With me, Tesh, Talk, Jamil. And yeah, we're going to be talking about the musical legend Prince and what he meant to us. Uh, it's been a bad year in general for musicians. Yeah. Uh, 2016 has been a bit of a bad year. You've got artists such as, well, obviously, Prince was the latest artist to mm. have uh, been taken That's away. That's a surprise. That mm. was a bit of a surprise. You've also got artists such as Glenn Frey, uh, guitarist and piano player from uh, the Eagles. Right. And even, I think, maybe a week, a week difference, or maybe even, I can't remember the actual dates, but you've also got the loss of David Bowie. Yeah. Huge mm. loss in the Probably music the industry. Yeah. First big one. Yeah, I'd say Dave, Rickman even. Personally, Dave Bowie's a big of a big influence. Yeah, mm. I mean, being a music producer myself. Mm. Yeah. Um, just some of his tracks. So it's just for, mm. uh, he's he's just a, a musical genius, Dave mm. Bowie. Definitely. But um, for me, I think I can't say I'm a huge Prince fan, but I can respect him as a musician. I mean, mm. he could pick up a guitar and absolutely just shred it. I mean, yeah. he's a talented dude. Um, but I'm having said that, I am doing a cover of um, one of his. Popular tracks, um, Little Red Corvette. So I'm going to be aiming to get that released with the record label and with Noise Cartel Records. Um, that was a big song that influenced me. I'm a mm. big fan of the original by Prince. Um, it's hard to find tracks on Prince on YouTube because I don't like yeah, it. Yeah. It's, yeah, it doesn't... He, he doesn't... Yeah, he really stickler for the copyright yeah, thing. Yeah. It's, um, um, try, it's hard trying to find... You like oh, I'm going to listen to some Prince. It's not easy to just yeah. chuck out a Prince album and uh, work away at work. You know, like um, mm. listening to some music. It's, it's yeah, like, man. He's pretty much a purist when it comes to that yeah. kind of you know intellectual property. The artist yeah. at work just, and all just that stuff. Just yeah. let people listen to music. You know? There's no need to be a knob. Yeah. <laughs> he's like the only one left. But with good reason though, like with what he went through mm. with Warner Brothers. And yeah, the record labels, point. like the whole thing with changing his name from Prince to... The artist formerly known as Prince. The symbol, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. because of the trouble that he went through with all the rights and Is that why he actually called, referred to himself as the yeah. artist formerly known as Prince? Because to get around the copyright on his name, he had to basically say, I'm not going to use my name anymore to basically give the middle finger to the, record the corporate Warner labels. Brothers. Yeah. Wow, I did yeah. not know that. Oh, yeah. well, I knew there was a bit of a controversy with his record label. Yeah. But I didn't know it was as a result of that. I thought, you know, like PD changed his name to P. Diddy Coombs and yeah, how many, like, six, six different names. Yeah, six different. Yeah. I thought it was something along the lines of that. So I, it was just kind of difficult to figure out what he was trying to do. But I didn't yeah. know that. That's interesting. Yeah. 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 Really and then, like, when he finally did get the rights back to Prince. Yeah. Yeah, you know he, he kind of, he was... My name is Prince. Yeah, that's that's right. He re sort of rebirthed himself. But yeah, what's what's um what what's some of your earliest memories of of listening to Prince and experiencing it for the first? Probably time? seeing him on Rage, to be oh, honest. Yeah. yeah, like the video clips, Raspberry Beret, like with him, just on the guitar with the clouds and everything yeah. going on in the background. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, and like, he just had that presence on stage yeah. that, like, in these video clips as well. Yeah. Um, where he was just comfortable with himself, like, he knew who he was. Yeah. And that sort of inspiration, like, came through in the music and the performances that he did everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. For me, my earliest memory of Prince, like, I'm not a big fan of Prince, but, like, I got introduced to it through you, Pat. Mm-hmm. But my yeah. earliest memory of Prince, do you remember that the, there was a stage show he did when we were really young of, you know, it's on Cream? He had like the mm. like the dance in front of him and dance behind him, both women. Yeah. And the, and they're all like this like big this big anaconda like humping each other. Yeah. Do you remember yes. that? Yeah, it, yeah. It, and it was like the most overtly sexual thing I saw as a child. Yeah. It would and, and it was sort of like it was like you know cream on top. You know you didn't really get it, but you understood <laughs> yeah. what was going on mm. there. Yeah. And it was like it was, cool. it was kind of like it was sexual, but it was okay. There was nothing wrong with it. Hmm. I mean, man. The- Man oozed sex. He did. Yeah, he sex, yeah. 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 But, but in terms of being sexually explicit, I think he always kept it at a sort of, a, you know, a nice level where it wasn't going into the domain of profanity or he wasn't... No, like, I mean, like, yeah. listen to the lyrics yeah. of, like, Red Corvette, because mm. uh, he talks about, like, I had a box of full of Trojans where my horses run free. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, she sounds like a bit of, you know, he's like, <laughs> like, picks all these ladies back to his place and yeah. puts them up on the wall. Right. It's like, wow, this guy's a bit of a player. Yeah. But, it's a bit of, yeah, but yeah. the song, it's 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 unreal. Like, I think what he does is is really good. Like, what mm. do they call I can't remember the... 
Do you mean double? Pref- not a double entendre, is it? It's um. Oh, you're talking about innuendos. Um, yeah, yes. innuendo. Um, sorry, innuendo. Yeah. An innuendo, and I think it was a really good play. Um, yeah. In terms of suggested lyrics, yeah, and then you have was... darling Nikki. Oh yes. <laughs> Masturbating in a that. magazine. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I, interesting little bit of trivia. That song in particular, I think, was was what it, it almost caused a big. You know when um, they started releasing explicit content labels on. Oh really? Really? Yeah, really? Yeah, that was, was that Prince? I, there was something to do with. Wouldn't surprise he, me. <laughs> but he was kind of all for it. He was with. He, he thought, yeah, fair enough. You know, but he wasn't going to compromise his music because mm. of it. Or. But he always skirted lines. Record sales. Because mm. like you know he was big in the eighties like and he, mm. like if you think back then like thirty years ago now or no more than that thirty six years ago, mm. thereabouts. Yeah. You know the, the the outfits he was wearing, the the song the, the the songs that he was singing. Yeah, it's like it really scared the lines of taste in those days, and he was pushing boundaries. You Big know time. what I mean? Big time. And like, if you really think about like those times, like back in those days, gay people got treated like crap. And oh was, yeah. yeah, yeah. And like you know, all those people back then used to say like, <laughs> cross dresser or all that kind of stuff. He he would have faced so much opposition to what he was about, and like. The amount of stuff we probably owe to people like that, mm. you know, Definitely. that we don't even think about. Yeah, you, know, the, like, you don't even realize um, that, like, you don't even appreciate nearly. Mm. You know, it, it, it's it's really important the kind of stuff that he did. You know, you're talking about songs, but yeah, you know, and, and all that stuff. You know, being comfortable with you, you expressing your sexuality and and it's mm. okay to explore different, you know, yeah. aspects of your identity. And someone like Bowie as well, yes. obviously. Yeah. You know, when you think about it, he was always sort of. Um, it, he was very sexually ambiguous for a lot of the time, but but just the, the effect that those two in particular had on on the broader culture and, and mm. making people feel, you know, it's okay to be gay or, or whatever. It's okay mm. to be different, you know. So yeah, um, that's something you don't always think about. And even for the boys not on the couch, Prince crossed into multiple genres. You know, touching on things like talk about was it was it Batman? Yeah, Batman. Like he did pretty much the entire soundtrack for that. So, mm. Risky really. business. I mean, he did some, he did a couple of tracks. I think a few tracks in that one. Wasn't it pre ruin as well? Uh, she's mm. singing in the bathtub. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're talking about multiple genres here. I mean, mm. Mm. you know, and and um, obviously Purple Rain, 1984, the music um, film classic. Um, yeah, it just blew me away uh, when I first saw it. But um, yeah, interesting little fact as well that he, at that point, I think that was kind of when he was really riding his, his utmost high. He, was, he had the number one single, When Doves Cry, number one album, Purple Rain, and number one film. Uh, the box office at that oh, time, wow. 1984, yeah. Wow. For one month running, yeah, all those. So. I'm, I'm but he's done so much. Stuff today, he's so. done so much. Yeah. And um, yeah, we just wanted to to mention him. And um, yeah. Because I know, Paddy, you're a, you're a bit of a... Oh yeah, man, he was big time. Like, uh, I mm. remember when I when I was a teenager and I first first listening to him and just just being inspired and thinking, man, this guy, get this. there's a little bit of me in there. You know, I think that's what he did. He kind of reached out and... Mm felt like it was really intimate with the listener it was a really and every time cool you walk in and Patsy the sexy motherfucker like oh, what's yeah, yeah. What's so and, and, just keep saying that and that's how we got into this yeah, yeah. So we listened to this yeah. guy grooving on yeah. and it was awesome so it's pretty yeah it's like the link I've always had with Prince has been yeah Pat like I remember one time we were on like a trip I think where was it Venus Bar Venus Bay Venus Bay <laughs> sorry yeah <laughs> And um, it was just like a boys, like New Year's Eve thing that we were doing. And it was like a real sort of country bumpkin sort of place, like <laughs> out in bush. And uh, we went to dinner at this like pub bistro sort of place. And like all the locals were there and we were there just these like guys in our early teens. Just city dwellers. Seriously. <laughs> causing trouble, up to no good. And there was a, a jukebox there. And I remember, I can't remember if it was you or if one of the other guys went up to the jukebox and yeah. Prince, sexy motherfucker was on there <laughs> and we were just all giggling to ourselves and we put that track on and like the rest of the people in the place were just like, like what's this? And like looking at us and we were just giggling ourselves yeah. and like, I've yeah. just always got that connection and just Beautiful. that memory of you and like how much you loved <coughs> to dance mm. to that music, man. Yeah. Like Dancing to Prince, you gotta do it. Yeah. Anyway, um, 
that's it from us and um, we'll see you next time. Peace out. You sexy motherfucker.